A film on the history of New Zealand's extreme sports pioneers is about to screen for the first time in New Zealand. Last Paradise has won accolades in the US and contains never-before-seen footage from some of the world's most idyllic and secret surf spots. Taranaki surfer and scientist Clive Neeson's film tells the story of a bunch of mavericks and follows them as they surf, jump, snowboard and invent new ways to thrill-seek all over the world. Kareen Ambler with a sneak preview. Watching some of Clive Neeson's footage, your first thought is, how on earth did he get that shot? Now, the object was to get a perspective, a perspective that you would want the viewer to get, to relive the same experience that you had as a participant. To achieve that, Neeson literally built a camera to sit on his surfboard. Well, I bought old cameras, broken cameras, repaired them, and then built water housings for them. When you caught the wave, you give the knob at the back an almighty whack, and then when you want to finish filming, you deliberately wipe out, and the mechanism down here switches the camera off. When I first saw Clive's footage, I was, I was stunned, really, by the sheer quantity that he had. Um, when we looked at the actual images, the, the, how good it looked, how beautifully he had framed it, exposed it, I, and the content, it was really interesting footage. It was film colourist John who suggested Clive Neeson make a film. While restoring the footage, he realised it was like nothing he'd ever seen before. So what you see in this movie, you go on a journey into worlds that don't exist anymore, a planet that is so different. Last Paradise has taken four years and half a million dollars to make and contains footage spanning 45 years. Neeson's only regret is that his filmmaker parents never got to see it. Well, my parents were wildlife cinematographers in Africa, in Eastern Africa, probably in the era when, when animals ruled, and we camped amongst it. Uh, to them it was just their personal hobby, probably part of their romance. They escaped to Africa, lived in a tent, and brought up four boys in the wilderness. It's clear he shares their passion. Some of the best footage shows the adventures he and his brothers had growing up. Here he is, towing his little brother through the mud in Raglan, and here with a go-kart he made himself. You dream about these crazy ideas of things you can do. It was always exciting because you didn't know whether you are going to live or die when you are doing them as a kid. We were always getting bruised. I mean, that was part and parcel of growing up in New Zealand back then. And the parents just, uh, just let you go. I mean, you learn the hard way. That theme of making your own fun and pushing yourself to the limit is what Last Paradise is all about. These pioneers discovered untouched spots all over the world. Here they are, surfing with humpback whales in the Australian outback. And here, in a previously undiscovered Mexican fishing village. In those days, it was, it was just normal to get out there and, and, and take a few knocks while you were challenging nature and your mates and that sort of Kiwi upbringing was was just normal like it when I look back at it it's like it's so different to today where you know so many kids are isolated and protected. Mr Adventure himself AJ Hackett is one of the film's many characters along with surfboard maker Dave Biggie Smithers who still lives in Taranaki. These mavericks invented ways to make their adventures bigger and better from the surfboard ankle rope to what is now known as the wakeboard. To this day, I've never seen anything like it. It was very, very technical. If you weren't perfect in your application, you went down so hard. We were considered oddball for what we did. Uh, today, it's mainstream. Today, it's one of the biggest industries in New Zealand. And New Zealand is most famous in the world as the world capital of extreme sports. For all its pleasure-seeking, the film Last Paradise has a serious message. Looking after the planet and finding ways to preserve remaining wilderness while we still can. The film stars are all in their 50s and 60s now, but still get outdoors on a daily basis, often with their children. It was such a great experience just to go and find a nice secret spot with your son and just go surfing together. It's a real privilege, you know, it's fantastic. We do it together as families and it's a bond for us rather than a wedge. Let the next generation push the push the boundaries, but we'll be there to support them, you know, help them go for it. 